<laughs> I'm just going to start by laughing. Uh, <clears throat> uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for being with us today. My name is Christopher Sheely. I'm the producing artistic director for the Fine Arts Center Theater Company, and I'm joined today uh, by two good friends and colleagues, uh, Jim Jackson and Christopher Keller. And we're, we're here specifically to talk about Balloonacy, which opens this Saturday, October 28th, on our second stage in the music room here at the Fine Arts Center. Uh, Jim, how are you today? Very well, thank you. Glad and, to be here. And Christopher? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, let's see. Maybe we could start, because many people know you're both, you're both um, longstanding members of the theater community. Uh, maybe we could start with a, just a little, could give a little bit of background of who you are and how you came to, oh, wait, I should start by saying Jim is directing Balloonacy. And Christopher is starring in Balloonacy, and it is a one-person show. So it is him and him alone for roughly an hour. Uh, yeah, so Jim, so a little bit about yourself and ties to the community. Uh, yes, well, I've been in the Colorado Springs uh, theater community for, oh, uh, since 1992. Uh, so a while, and uh, my wife and I, uh, my wife Brigitte Dupree and I started the Manitou Art Theater in 2002, and then that became the Milibo Art Theater, in, uh, uh, and that's what it's known as today. So uh, we're still doing that, and we've done lots of shows uh, in the community, and then uh, prior to that, I did lots of touring around the country and other countries, and have been doing this for a long time. <laughs> and, and Christopher? I started in this theater community oh, a long time ago, 1980 maybe, maybe a little later. I did a lot of the theater. I was the, the go-to kid um, in, in a lot of productions when I was younger, even here at the FAC. Um, I really got the ball rolling when I was around 16, doing a lot here as well. And then... Uh, and, and, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Christopher is uh, Eve Tilly's son who one of her son, sons yeah. who and, and eve is a, a huge supporter of the fine arts center has been her entire life and directed many shows here and been on stage with us so just full disclosure <clears throat> yeah 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 she was president of the the uh star bar players for a long time right and so which right. is why you know my brothers and i would get plugged into all kinds of things and so i don't know if it was a a career by choice or by birth or just by torture or whatever it is. Uh, theater is it is theater is life. This is kind of what it is. Yeah. Uh, which is a great segue um, to talk a little bit about. Y you have common ground, the two of you. You both have significant. Uh, and, and for lack of a better way of describing, like I say affectionately that you're clowns in the way that somebody would say, oh, they're a clown. <laughs> you're both really clowns. You're trained, you've, you've traveled, touring in circuses as, as performers. And I'd love to know, everybody always wants to know, how does that happen? <laughs> and, and, like, because that's an unusual, you know, theater's not, like, not many people exist in professional theater, but then you can just narrow that down even more into, into clowning and circus. So, so a little bit about that, Jim, how, how did you, what's your, what's your history and how did, how did that happen for you? And then we'll ask Chris the same question. Yes, well, it's a good question because I kind of came full circle back to theater uh, after uh, starting out in, in circus and street performing and uh, uh, really the variety arts, you know, a bit of magic, a bit of juggling, um, different circus skills. Uh, and when I got out of college, I was lucky enough to get a contract with a show and with a circus, a traveling circus, and that led to another contract, to another contract, and then 25 years later, I was was still doing it you know so so you sort of I think you grow into being a clown you know uh, I mean you can define yourself as that with the makeup and the costume and the red nose or whatever but it, it takes a while to grow into that and then you can honestly say oh yeah I am a clown but it it doesn't happen overnight you know uh -huh, uh -huh. and Christopher how about how about you uh, yeah I, I definitely agree with what Jim's saying. I'm still not sure that I have achieved <laughs> the prestigious status of clown. I'm, I'm still working towards it. Um, I know, I can remember back in high school getting to play the comedic roles and realizing why would anybody want to play anything else than the comedic roles. Um, and then um, I found that if you don't get to play with the audience, well, what's the point in that? Uh, doing things like street theater as well. Um, 
And so I got into children's theater and children's theater, you almost always get to play with the audience a little bit because you can't, you can't not. So that's also kind of clown. Um, and I guess I got to do a little work with, with Jim. Oh goodness. Rubes and Luddites. I watched him do a little clowning then. That was my first real experience into that. And, uh, after building a few shows, uh, at the Millie Bow, I realized I needed, I needed more. So I ran off and got a clowning education from the circus center in San Francisco and did some stuff there and toured around a little bit, did a lot of puppet work. I love puppet work. That's good. I also do a lot of the variety stuff, uh, juggling, balancing arts, things like that, uh, a little bit of acrobatics. Uh, and now I have returned home to, to set up roofs at the Millie Bow. It's kind of where I like to play. So it's, it's a, it's a big honor to get to do this show here at the FAC and to get to do it with Jim. It's, yeah. It's and, 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 and it, it's funny because when I first reached out to Jim about, Hey, we, we'd like to, to, to go forward with producing Blunacy. Would you like to be involved? Um, he, you were, you were a name that came up right away because of the unique skill set um, required to, to, to do this show. But, um, Maybe this is a good opportunity to talk a little bit more about the programming at the Millibo, and because you 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 have you you program for all ages, but when I think of what you're maybe best known for, it's in service of the little ones and the educational side of what you do, or at least that's what I'm most enamored with. Mm -hmm. um, and and so you both so that that's a huge part of it, and maybe you could talk about that. And Christopher, I know you teach, um, uh, and and are a big part of that, and I just. I have I have uh, a lot of respect for for the programming that you all offer year round. Well, well thank you, thank you. Yes, you know it, it's uh, the theater that we started uh, 21 years ago was originally a children's theater, and then we uh, expanded it to include new works, primarily 99% new works, new plays for the theater, and that was sort of the adult side. Mm -hmm. But we still kept the children's programming and then uh, grew that into lots of different classes and workshops and summer camps. Um, we've had an ongoing circus club, uh -huh. uh, which Christopher is a, a wonderful coach for. Uh, we've had that for 10 years now, and a lot of young circus artists have come through that program. So it's, it's something we love to do. And then programming at the theater is a lot of variety. We do cabaret and circus and, and uh, comedy, improv, um, and a lot of work for children. Um, puppetry. Mm -hmm. uh, puppetry is now kind of becoming a, a big thing. Mm -hmm. But for us, it was always a thing, you know. And uh, when we first started out, one of the first plays we ever had in the theater back in 2002 was a puppet show. And uh, every season, we've had puppetry as part of the theater. It's it's a great art form, and uh, we we love that it's coming back, and lots of productions are seeing the value of it now. So, yeah, and and uh, <clears throat> your your role because you're a regular at the Millibo now. I would say so. Yeah, yeah. I was reg I was a regular at the Millibo before. Um, uh -huh. I mean, part of part of why I ventured out was working at the Millibo and and going. Okay, this is. There's so much going on here that I kind of understand and so much that I don't understand. I, you can learn a lot about yourself and about your craft just by going out into the world and seeing what's going on. And I was, I was much younger and I figured it was time. Um, so I did that. But at the Millibo, I mean, we, we built multiple shows because um, the Millibo is excellent at creating theater as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we created a lot of different a lot of different shows and I think I can remember the the moment when I realized I needed more and it was watching Jim do take after take after take trying to figure out what was the right way to do something and me being like that's great and he's like no, no, no. no that's good too no, 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 no. and him finally going that's the one and I went how does he know that and he's right but how does he know that um, <laughs> so now I'm back there again doing the same things and hoping to uh, hoping to build more shows we, we built one recently there uh, mm -hmm. Brigitte is an amazing director and really understands how to help you tell a story, and so, yeah. And and which is which is another great segue because that that makes it uh, uh, all the more fortunate that we were able to to uh, borrow the two of you to come and tell this this story, <laughs> <clears throat> the story yeah. of Balunasi here together. And and I wonder, um, uh, Jim, if you might share a little bit about what it was about the the piece that made you feel like yes I, I i'd like to i'd like to helm this and direct this and and then what made you feel like christopher would be a, a terrific performer 
Yes, you know, I think Balloonacy is a, a very special show. It's a very rare show, especially in children's theater in America, in the U.S. You see shows like this in Europe more often, but it's a show for one actor, a very talented, very skilled actor, uh, who plays an old man, and uh, and that's it. There's no dialogue. Uh, there are, is a beautiful set, which he plays on, uh, amazing set, and then there's lots of magic, lots of surprise prizes uh, all coming from a red balloon so it's an old man a red balloon and uh, and we have I think managed to fill very well uh, uh, about 45 minutes with uh, and we hope we don't know yet because we haven't done it for an audience and especially an audience that it's meant for which is that sort of age from one to eight or one yeah. to nine you know even though I think older children and adults will enjoy it as well but until we get in there with the audience we're not quite sure if we filled it out but we we are hoping that we have loaded it with lots of laughs and, and just lots of great fun. Yeah, it was a little when when uh, uh, I was able to see a, a run through the other night, and and it was I, I laughed out loud, it, and and I went home and I said to somebody, it's kind of like watching a Charlie Chaplin film, but modernized and made for kids. It was it was very it was it was it was very rich and a lot of layers, and I laughed and it had a great time, and I realized as a as a parent myself with the, some of the funnest experiences when my daughter was younger was seeing live performances together when we both shared that moment, when we both laughed together, we both could enjoy it in our own ways. That, that's where I think that the, the lasting joy really is in children's theater, and I, and I was having that moment the other night. So, so Christopher, for you, uh, this, what's it like to, to walk on stage and everything is, you're literally the show's on your back, and and you walk out there, and it's you alone. <laughs> with that's, a, well, that's not true. It's not really you alone. It's, it's, it's not, you it's, it's, and a balloon. And, and a balloon. And which, a balloon. And and we we have wonderful help to to deal with a balloon and sound and technical aspects and the set and all of these great things that you get to play with. Uh, and I'm I'm pretty comfortable being out there alone. I'm. Uh, it's it's great to get to work with a cast and to be supported by a cast, but you know I did a lot of street theater and doing street theater you're not supported by anybody, um, so it's not it doesn't feel very different uh, from what I'm used to. I think I think the thing that's most different is that it's as opposed to creating the the bit that leads to the next bit that leads to the next bit. It's trying to understand where a different actor a different creator built something and then how we make these bits work for for us and for our audiences and and to push it to the next piece and and to make it as believable as possible and 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 to to get it i don't know to to get it entertaining not just for those little ones but for you as well i think mm -hmm. um so that's I think that's that's super important for what's going on, and I won't really know either until there's an audience. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. When you're when you're just kind of going through these things, and it's it's slapstick or it's whatever the actions are, and there's no response, it, there's not even crickets. It's just <laughs> it's just you. It's just you oh, yeah. being silly, and then and then hoping that that what you've created is is enough. Um, mm -hmm. And, and things will change and they'll get tweaked and, and we'll find out more as the show goes up. Um, like we were talking about earlier about watching a cast tighten up yeah. a show. Yeah. Um, certain pieces will work and certain pieces will work for some audiences and not work for others. So it's, it's gonna be a fun, it's gonna be a fun experience more than it more than anything I think and it, you know it is a real hybrid play because it's for children um, and and it has all the elements of a clown show mm -hmm. except the element which is a clown generally generates their own material mm -hmm. is their own author as well as performer uh, their own creator and here we had a, a script which didn't have words but it had a, very much a, a concise road map that uh, they used when they first put this show together so so that I think is has been the challenge too is to is to make that road map our own and uh, and to give it to Christopher in a way that he can he can play it uh, to his strengths and his uh, uh, all of the abilities that he has, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to it for um, for folks who don't know. Uh, we the last <clears throat> the last show that we were running here at the Fine Arts Center uh, was a children's show in the music room, and that 
we shuttered about a week into the COVID lockdown, and we haven't done children's theater since then, and uh, we've wanted to get back to it. So it, it's, um, it's very exciting to have, have come back to this benchmark, but then the story itself for me, and I really felt this the other night in the room, um, it's, 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 it's one of watching a, you know, an older curmudgeon who's sort of set in their ways and life is the way it is. And then this pesky balloon shows up and brings this old man out of their comfort zone and out of their shell. And, and you watch, you have this experience where you're willing to open and laugh and engage and trust again. And, and that's, you know, reading the script, that's what it felt like. And I thought, well, that's kind of, isn't that what the world needs right now as a story? <laughs> but then as I, as I watched it, I, I really felt um, like we were, we were getting that story told between what the two of you had been, had been able to come up with through the rehearsal process. So it's very, um, very exciting to see that here. And uh, it, again, it opens uh, this Saturday and we do two shows on Saturday and two shows on Sunday for the following four weeks. And there are student matinees as well. So there's a lot of opportunity for you to, uh, to bring, bring your little ones and your old ones out to see the show because it's a, a, it's a really good time. Um, I'll plug, I'll also plug real quick, Misery runs through this weekend. Uh, and uh, it is uh, horrifying and terrifying and scary in all the right ways and uh, is, is a great show. So there's still an opportunity to grab uh, a ticket to see Misery. And, and perhaps you could tell us what's coming up. I know you just did a benefit for uh, Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, it's been a, a busy month at the Millibo. Lots of different shows, a different show each weekend. But we'll settle down in November uh, when we bring a, a wonderful production that was a, a big hit in Denver last year. Uh, Jessica Robley, who's a wonderful yeah. actor. Um, actually, she won a Henry Award for Best Actor in this production of The Bell of Amherst. And it'll play at the Millibo for eight shows uh, the first two weekends of November. Mm -hmm. So that's coming right up, which is, is great. Mm -hmm. About balloonacy again, um, I, I really do urge you to bring little ones to it mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there is no dialogue. There's uh, nothing that uh, uh, they won't understand just by sitting there and watching it. And they will take it in uh, uh, as, uh, as their level, uh, as their age level, as their experience level lets them. And uh, I, I love that fact that we're welcoming that age group into the theater. You know, it's uh, it's there's no better time to start the habit of live theater than age one, possibly two. Get, but get one young. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hook them, hook them exactly. when they're little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I'll uh, I'll also plug. Um, uh, we started sent a student here recently. Twenty five dollars is what it takes on average to ticket and transport a student. Uh, to see the, 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 the transformative power, the beauty of live theater. And uh, you can go to fsc.coloradocollege.edu, send a student, and you could send one student for 25 bucks. Or, as I keep saying to everybody, you could send 10 students for $250 and just turn your cable off for one month, and that would work as well. <laughs> uh, but it is, it is, to your yeah. point, we're, we're trying to find ways to get, to get kids get kids here to see mm -hmm. theater mm -hmm. and and it is you know that's the future of our craft either as theater artist makers but also future audiences you know mm -hmm. you don't you mm -hmm. don't know to to support it and enjoy it if you've never been and a lot of a lot of students don't have that opportunity so so right. specifically that money goes for title one schools who might not be able to otherwise mm -hmm. come up with the uh, funds to do it so so you can uh, you can come to balloon a seat and send a student I love uh, it any any final <laughs> any final thoughts i feel like this has been great i enjoy the two of you so much and the work you're doing and and jim you always have a smile on you always have a smile on your face <laughs> <laughs> um and anything anything i haven't touched on anything that you want to you want to add yeah, that that seems to cover it pretty, pretty <laughs> yeah, well. We I mean, managed to yeah. ramble on for what yeah. a good twenty yeah. some minutes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and again, I would just reiterate that uh, that balloonacy is a is it's an important piece of theater uh, that. Uh, 
adults and children should see. You know, it really yeah. introduces back uh, a real uh, actor's craft that is physical theater mm -hmm. and uh, does not rely on text, uh, but uses uh, all of the other elements of theater, timing and physicality and character and, and, uh, and creates a story, a very uh, uh, logical, rational story that you can follow, even if you're one. <laughs> yeah. 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 Or at least that's the goal. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's pretty universal in that as well, that because of the, the non-language, everybody, mm -hmm. everybody can understand it. Yeah, from, mm. from 1 to 91, and it'll give you a good opportunity to grow down if you need a little bit of that, lighten mm -hmm. up your heart, and mm -hmm. get a little young. It's, it's fun. It, it's fun. It'll be fun for everybody. Yeah. Well, uh, Jim, Christopher, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to, to do this, but being a part of the family and, and helping create a show here with us at the Fine Arts Center. We're very, very grateful to have you. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you for giving us the opportunity. Yeah.